from the county assembly. So, Council for County Assembly, you may proceed to make your closing statement for not more than 60 minutes. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Speaker. Sam, we'll have Mr. Murioki taking the first 20 minutes. Mr. Speaker, my name is Eric Murioki. I will take the first 20 minutes of our closing argument. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members of the Senate, when the story of devolution in Kenya is told, or is written, the members of the Third County Assembly of Meru will be remembered fondly as champions of devolution who, without compromise or favor, exercise their oversight role, champion for accountability, transparency, and good governance by holding the person accused before you to account for every transgression. These members of the Third County Assembly have performed their oversight duty even when it was inconvenient to do so, even when it was not fashionable, despite several and serious challenges, including threats to their lives and their families, as you heard the testimony of the attempted touching of the Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, the MCS, the elected representatives of Meru County, have told this Honorable House time and time again that there is a problem in Meru. In 2022, the MCAs were before this house when the governor, barely a few months after being sworn in, had opened war fronts against members of the county assembly through vilification campaigns, against the church, against elected leaders in the county. And back then, during the first impeachment process, the governor was offered invaluable pieces of advice by the members of this house who were in the select committee that was investigating the matter. And indeed, the governor vowed to become the foremost peacemaker in Meru. This vow was short-lived, and in 2023, the governor found herself again before this house, answering to other charges, having opened more war fronts, including now her own deputy, by encouraging and condoning junior officers to undermine and insult that deputy governor. She was at war with the members of parliament from Meru. She was at war with the council of elders, with the senator of Meru, and other leaders, as the records of this house will reflect. Now, the governor has fallen out with her own Secretary of the County Public Service Board. And perhaps inspired by getting away with her actions twice, the governor has now become so bold in her violations of the law to the extent that she has personally, under her own signature, purported to dismiss the Secretary of the County Public Service Board in clear and gross violation of sections 58 and 59 of the County Government Act and in usurpation of the powers of the Assembly. Although the Governor terms what she did as revocation, she has failed when put to task to point to any provision of the law that allows this thing called revocation. Mr. Speaker, sir, for purposes of putting the record straight in this House, once a member of the Public Service Board, or the County Public Service Board, is appointed in accordance with the County Government Act, Section 58, the process of removing that member is as is provided in Section 58.5 of the County Government Act and upon the grounds that are set out in Article 251 of the Constitution. 
And despite being advised by her own chairperson of the County Public Service Board, the governor proceeded to purport to revoke the appointment of Ms. Virginia Kawira Mereti, who is now only in office pursuant to a court order. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable senators, surely it cannot be, or at least it cannot honestly be, that everybody else is a problem in Meru. It cannot be that it is the MCAs that are the problem. It cannot be that it is the church which is a problem. It cannot be that it is the elected leaders that are the problem. It cannot be that it is her own deputy that is a problem and now the county public service board. Mr. Speaker, sir, during previous proceedings before this house, the governor blamed her misdeeds or whatever went wrong in the county on two officers, the chief of staff and the county secretary in her famously infamous defense of it wasn't me. However, when the county assembly made recommendations that the governor institutes disciplinary measures including dismissal against these officers that she blamed for things going wrong in the county, she refused to implement this recommendation. A fair-minded and reasonable person, honorable senators, must therefore conclude that the governor has been acting through those officers or that they have been violating the law and the constitution with her blessing and under her patronage. On one hand, the governor tells you in her defense that the violations of the law she is being accused of are occasioned by others. It is the county secretary, it is the chief of staff, and that those others should be called to answer those violations. But then, on the other hand, the governor proceeds to tell you that the county assembly has no powers to recommend that the governor should take action against these very officers that she blames for those violations. Surely, honorable senators, the governor cannot have it both ways. Article 185.3 of the Constitution of Kenya empowers the county assembly to exercise oversight over the county executive. And one of the measures of oversight is to recommend removal from office of these officers that the governor herself has previously pointed at and blamed for violations of the law. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable senators, when you retire to make your determination, remember it is not the MCA's word against the governor's. No, it is the governor's own words and actions against the legal and constitutional requirements of good governance and integrity. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable senators, you have heard in videos number 1A of the county assembly and 1B, the governor, in her own words, tell a dangerous lie that 86 million shillings was collected for the burial of the deceased sniper, a fact she very well knew to be false. And when put to task to prove those statements, she has failed. In cross-examination, the governor states that the only evidence that she has of 86 million is a video which video has not even been shown to this house. Mr. Speaker, sir, you heard the young widow that stood here, Irene, tell you that as a result of the governor's lies, she has not only been ostracized by the community, but has also become a target because people think she has 86 million that she is holding on to. Honorable Senators, let me remind you that the evidence of the young widow 
was unchallenged. Not a single question was put to her in cross-examination by the governor. And the inference here must be that she was telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to the extent that her testimony could not be challenged. Honorable Senators, words spoken by leaders mean something, or at least they ought to. Words spoken by leaders have real consequences. A leader of the stature of a governor telling such a lie to the public has led to such disastrous consequences as you had the witness testify here that she can't even live in a matrimonial home. Honorable Senators, that cannot be taken as anything else other than gross misconduct. Article 73 of the Constitution of Kenya does not leave any room for a public officer to make such misleading utterances to the public, endangering the lives of others and bringing dishonor and disrepute to the office that she occupies. And such misleading claims are also in gross violation of Section 19 of the Public Officer uh, Ethics Act. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honorable Senators, you heard the Governor in cross-examination say, admit here, that her conduct was insensitive to the family. This pattern of lying to the public that the governor engaged in, she did so while paying full salary and benefits to one of the persons accused of murder of sniper. Krista Kambi, Manjara is a communications officer in the office of the governor. It is not in doubt that he was charged on the 29th of February, 2024, and it is not in doubt that he continued to receive his full salary and benefits as evidenced by the pay slips produced in, among others, page 392 and 393 of volume 2 of the county assembly documents. Mr. Speaker, sir, in that pattern of lying, the governor says in a video that she does not know this person who is a main suspect called Vincent Moretti. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, documents have proven that this person was employed as a deputy director of the governor's press and that one of his referees in the governor's own words is the governor's sister who is also her PA. You will find this person's letters of appointment in pages 445 to 452 of volume 2. This is a person that the governor denied having any knowledge of. Honorable Senators, it cannot be a coincidence that this outspoken activist who criticized the governor was murdered just a few weeks after the second impeachment motion. It cannot be a coincidence that the people accused and charged are so close to the governor by her own admission. Honorable Senators, moving on. As a result of the governor's breach of, law, of the law and court orders, the county of Meru has suffered financial losses, including being slapped with costs of 3 million shillings. And this house can confirm the same from the decree of the court produced in pages 162 and 163 of volume 2. Honorable Senators, the Auditor General's report identifies that the management of Meru County is headed by the Governor. And this is in line with Article 179.4, which identifies the Governor as the Chief Executive of the County Assembly. And the Auditor General's report 
flags breaches of the law by the management by including other things, irregular payments, excessive wage bill, use of the manual payroll, which compromises transparency and accountability, and this can be confirmed from pages 344 to 347 of our volume 2. Honorable Senators, the use of the manual payroll, according to the Auditor General, has led to a loss of 102.9 million. Honorable Senators, the Governor has refused or failed to appoint chairpersons of various boards in Meru County, and therefore these boards cannot be said to be legally constituted. Even when the Governor purportedly forwarded names of nominees to these boards, she failed to forward accompanying information or clarification sought as is required by the Public Appointments County Assembly's Approval Act, Sections 4 and 6. Honorable Senators, you have been treated, or at least attempts have been made to treat this house to theatrics by the Governor and her legal team, who in attempts to deflect the attention of this house from the governor's violations of the law have resorted to the stories of gender and other irrelevances, which are not a sufficient defense or explanation to any of the violations in the impeachment motion. Honorable Senators, as the governor claimed that she legally revoked the appointment of uh, the CEO of the Public Service Board based on advice from an unnamed legal advisor. The person who was serving as a legal advisor to the governor at the time in question came here, testified. Came here and testified that the internal memo dated 23rd February was a forgery. She saw an affidavit that was presented to this house. Honorable Senators, the said memo bears no name and there can be no clearer indication than this that it is indeed a forgery. In the opening remarks by the governor's uh, council, this house was told that the assembly is lying, and in fact the words used were that the assembly is made of pathological liars who have believed their own lies. In view of this forged memo, I therefore ask this Honorable House, and I invite the Senators to ask who is lying. The same Governor who accuses this Assembly, uh, the County Assembly of lying, is caught forging that internal memo. A ruling was made this morning that she should deliver the original memo. She has failed to do so. The Governor, in the same pattern of lies, stands here and tells you that she has 23 MCA supporting her. The impeachment motion, Akasari Luk will tell you, it was signed by 49 MCAs. And simple math tells you that 49 plus 23 is 72. Yet, shockingly, the County Assembly of Meru has only 69 MCAs. So it cannot be true that the Governor has 23 MCAs supporting her. The Supreme Court in the Sunko case was categorical that there is no obligation in impeachment proceedings to prove each and every charge, and this means that even one charge substantiated should suffice. In that case, in that case, Honorable Senators, guidance was offered that impeachment proceedings are quasi-judicial in nature and are not in the nature of criminal proceedings. They don't necessarily require that criminal culpability should be proven to succeed. All that is required is that these allegations be substantiated. This word substantiate, what does it mean? It simply means to provide evidence. It does not necessarily mean to prove beyond reasonable doubt. It means that there must be substance in those allegations that they have been proven to have substance. Honorable Senators, as I conclude, 
the evidence presented before this house cannot be trivialized to statistical count as an attempt was made in cross-examination of the mover. The gender card cannot be used to escape accountability. It is not a carte blanche or a shield to commit impunity. It is not about being female or male. It is about violations of the law and the constitution. Honorable Senators, finally, in paragraph 7 of the Governor's response, that is uh, volume 1 of the Governor's document, she seems to suggest that the county assembly, uh, the county uh, government of Meru should be dissolved. I call on this house to reflect on the words uh, of the Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 8 to 9. And to paraphrase, uh, the words of Jesus Christ as he was uh, teaching the people then, if your hand or your foot makes you sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better to enter the kingdom of heaven maimed or lame than to be thrown to everlasting fire with both feet and hands. There is no cause for, for dissolution of Meru County. The problem is the governor and Meru can be saved by removing the governor from office as the constitution empowers the county assembly and this honorable house to do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable senators. And I pray that you will find that the charges against the governor have been substantiated. And I pray that in keeping with the motto of this honorable house for the welfare of society and the just government of the people, including the people of Meru, that you will do the right thing and send Governor Kawira Mangaza home. Thank you. I invite my senior Mr. Ndegwa to conclude our closing. Thank you very kindly. Um, I must begin by conveying the apology on the part of the County Assembly for having to engage this distinguished assembly in all these processes. It is not out of the own making of the county assembly. It is a call of necessity. Necessity has dictated that we must come before you as and when time and stations and circumstances arise. A situation has arisen where we have to come before you, the honorable members of the Senate, to ask you to do your noble thing of exercising um, oversight over the county government of Meru. I have time and again um, put it on record that the county assembly of Meru and the people of Kenya have a lot of confidence in the manner in which this house conducts its business. It's on that basis, therefore, that we have been able to appear before you severally seeking and pleading for only one thing, that justice be done in the county government of Meru. And what justice are we looking for, honorable members? We are looking for justice of that particular person who is not able to access services, courtesy of bad governance. What justice are we looking for? We are looking for justice of that child we saw who was born on a karai, that child who cannot speak, that child who cannot, whose fate is not even determined. And when the governor is put to task, says, I have just been made aware. How would you take that governor to be a responsible person? How would you take that person to be a person who is capable of en enhancing good governance, delivery of services? How is it that she was not aware that that hospital is not functional? How is it that she is not aware that that hospital or dispensary has a functional maternity wing? She takes no bother to confirm why the hospital was not functional as at then. Even having been made aware as at yesterday, she still says, I am not aware. Is that the governor who is capable of running the county? Is it really the mistake of the part of the county assembly?
or is the county assembly being invited by the misconduct and the misdeeds of the governor? Can the county government, can the county assembly of Meru County sit pretty and watch things go south? Is it, isn't it their responsibility to exercise oversight over the performance of the county government? Are they wrong when they invite the, the, uh, the Senate to help and assist and facilitate the operation, operationization of, their, um, uh, uh, of the oversight uh, function? That is all what we are asking for. That is all what we are asking for. If we were in the UK setup, this house qualifies to be the House of Lords. It's a house of lords because it's capable of determining where the truth is and where the lie is. Evidence has been led from the county assembly. Grouts were approved by the first the mover of the first, uh, of the impeachment. That it is true the governor has transgressed and violated the constitution. When she was put to task to explain the circumstances that led to the revocation of that C uh, CEO. She simply said, it wasn't me. And how can it be that the governor can be allowed to get away with a forgery? Isn't it a criminal case in the first instance? And who has a burden of proof? The, the person who claims that the signature was forged appeared before the Senate. Her evidence was put through test by cross-examination. And clarification and verification was sought by the members of the of the Senate. Who then is lying? Is it Linda Kawe? Is it Linda Kiome? Or is it the governor? Can the governor be trusted? Put to task and granted an opportunity to bring even the original um, uh, advisory. She simply said it was seated somewhere in Meru. Unfortunately, unfortunately, she mistook where the, the place of the trial. The place of the trial is not in Meru, it's before this Senate. Is, it, is that a conduct that is consistent with innocence? If she was innocent, if there was not forgery, why was it so difficult for her just to bring that one letter? Why could resources not be committed to make sure that as and when she was made aware that that is an issue, that a letter could not be procured 200, 180 kilometers away from the place of her trial. What is she concealing? What is she hiding? Is she hiding scrutiny? Is that conduct again consistent with an innocent man or innocent woman? I beg, uh, I urge you, honorable senators, to find it in our favor that we have proved that particular ground. That the letter that was meant, that the advisory that was meant to rebut our evidence in respect to ground one is a document that is a forgery. In the case of Philomena Mwilu, the Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, it was held that evidence that is tainted with illegality it cannot be admitted. The admissibility of that evidence is in question. And having read the case of Wambora in the, in the civil appeal number 21 of 2014, this court of appeal suggests that this is a quasi-judicial process. And it being a quasi-judicial process, the rules of evidence plays a fundamental role in the manner in which the admissibility of document is, 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 is concerned. I sought leave of this house to have the document placed on record. They took no initiative. Why? Because they wanted to conceal the lie. They wanted to conceal the offense of perjury. They could not withstand the embarrassment that a signature was lifted. It matters not whether the governor is an IT guru. It matters not whether she is techno savvy. It matters that a document was brought before you that is as a result of a forgery. We seek that you find it in our favor that that particular ground was not defended, it was not controverted, and that the ground suffices to meet the test laid down under Article 8181 as read together with Section 33 of the County Government Act. And then what is the threshold in terms of that particular um, 
judge the threshold is that of um it lies between um reason of, um it lies between um balance of probability and below beyond reasonable doubt that is what the case of governor wambora stated that you are not supposed to prove the burden of proof is not beyond reasonable doubt it's not beyond reasonable doubt because this is not a criminal trial and that distinguishes the case from what the from the case that was quoted by senator kajuang that this is not a criminal trial to seek the county assembly to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt to the extent of seeking the intervention of a forensic document examiner it's on balance of probability whom should we believe who should we believe is said the person who has committed serious transgressions is it the person who is not in touch with the county is it the person who is in war with all the leaders in the particular in, in the entire county is it the lead, is it the person who is not even in good terms with his senator whom should we believe should we not believe leader what personal vendetta would leader be having she is not vying for a seat of governor it matters not that whether she was a running mate to the previous uh, um, candidate or not but it matters that an offense was committed we urge you honorable senators to find that the, that in revoking the appointment of cpa virginia kawera governor kawera violated the constitution she violated article 20, article article 10 of the constitution on the question of the rule of law she violated article 27 on the equality before the law and the equal benefits of the law that it was uh, that virginia was not subjected to equal protection and equal benefit of the law under article 27 she equally violated article 70 article 50 that she was not given a fair trial or a fair opportunity to defend her case when sought when put to task she attempts to become a, to become a linguistic to to, uh, to purport to differentiate between removal and revocation when called to task to read the provisions of section 58 and section 59 of the county government act honorable senators she simply could not distinguish at the end of the day whether a revocation or a dismissal it never followed the due process the county assembly was never involved it violated that particular provision and for that reason governor kawira must take responsibility taking responsibility is not an act of cowardice it's not an act of weakness it's an act of saying yes i was wrong it's an act of admitting when somebody is wrong and that is what article 10 speaks about the question of accountability and that is what article 73 which governor kawira has violated speaks about Article 73, Honorable Senators, speaks about a person who holds the office of a governor or any other office in the Republic of Kenya, breathing confidence in that particular office. When Governor Kawira lies blatantly, openly to the whole world that she was able to procure an advisory opinion, who can believe her? Is she breathing confidence in that particular office? Should she not be held to account? Is she not bringing that office to disrepute? Honorable Senators, we submit that that particular charge has been sufficiently approved. Uh, On the question of the appointment of the chairpersons, again we prove that we have been able to dispose of the, our burden of not proving this allegation beyond reasonable doubt but on balance of probability that yes governor kawira has crippled the operations of the meru county by blatantly failing and ignoring and or neglecting to execute her functions as a chief executive of meru county that amounted to the violation of section 4 of the public appointments uh, um, act in that that requires uh, when the governor is bestowed with the responsibility of a duty to follow the provisions of the law can she be acquitted how many times is governor kawira going to commit transgressions and get away with it how many times
When she gets away with the transgressions, where do we leave the people of Meru County? Do the people of Meru County equally deserve justice? Should there not be a balance between the people of Meru County? Where should the balance lie? How should the balance swing? In whose favor is the balance swinging? I suggest and propose and submit that the balance swings in favor of the people of Meru County. They deserve justice before this particular, but before this house, they are crying out for justice. They are looking upon you to, to dispense with the justice. And there cannot be justice by sending Governor Kawira back to, 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 to Meru. The only justice that can be served, I suggest, is telling her you have failed in your duties, you have neglected in your duties, you have violated the constitution, you do not know what the constitution dictates. Remember, she swore to defend this constitution, but she is one of the greatest transgressors of the same document that she is seeking solace and reprieve from. Honorable Senators, Governor Kawira has come before you with dirty hands. She deserves no favor. She deserves no kindness. She deserves no kindness before this particular house, before this Senate. She has come to you with dirty hands. She is not even remorseful that a toddler was born in a karai when there is just an adjacent health facility. If we shall, if we, there will be no any other reason for sending Governor Kawira home, please remember the fate of that particular child. Remember the fate of that particular mother who got embarrassed on that particular day. Remember the interpretation that was done that Men and women had to make sure that young children do not, go to, do not go near that naked woman to see her nakedness. How many embarrassments will this house be treated to? Isn't that something that we need all to take cognizance of? Was that video proving failure of service delivery? Who is responsible of delivering those services if it is not Governor Kawira, who has proved on oath that she has failed? Who else should we hold accountable? Who else should we hold accountable? Should she even be allowed to hide behind the cultural card? She has said and submitted that it is the culture of the Meru people to become and to, 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 to look down upon women. I believe honorable senators who are present before this honorable house, including the senator of Meru, is a family man. There must be a woman in that particular house. If the senator is a misogynist, how does he live with his wife in his house? How does he live with his daughters in his house? If it is true, the people of Meru are masculine, how do they multiply and perpetuate the Meru generation. That is a blatant lie. She shouldn't be allowed to hide behind issues that are not founded either in law or in fact. She must be told it's now time for you to go. She must be told we have given you two opportunities, you have failed to reform. She must be told the Senate has listened to you severely, but you have failed to conform. She cannot conform, she will not conform, she will not reform because she is not a reformist. She, don't, she does not understand the story of a reformist. All what she understands, as indicated in her uh, submissions and evidence, is that the county government, the county assembly is telling the story, the story of a, the, the single story. Which other single story have we told, uh, told the Senate? other than the single story of the violations of the Constitution. Which other single story have we told this House other than the story of the suffering of the people of Meru County? That is a single story. We have no other story. It's a single story of the suffering of the people of Meru County. They are craving upon you, Honorable Senators, to save them. They are craving upon you to save them from all these blatant violations. On the question of refusal to implement the recommendations by the county assembly, you might want to ask yourself 
Why the failure? It was not a coincidence. It is by design. Because it's the code between the governor, the chief of staff, and the county secretary. That web must be in existence for Governor Kawira to exist. That is why it was impossible for her to implement the report recommended by the county assembly. Those are her code wits. If you find any mismanagement, any embezzlement, any uh, uh, failure of good governance, look at that web. It must be maintained for Governor Kawira to continue um, transgressing the county. It must be maintained for Governor Kawira to continue perpetuating the suffering of people of Meru. Why is it so difficult for her to implement that report? Why is it difficult for her to see that there was necessity for her to implement that report as recommended by an equal arm of, the, of, of her government? The answer is one. She needs that network for her to perpetuate illegalities that she's perpetuating currently in Meru County. When put to task whether the reports and why they were not uh, implemented, she simply said, they were not sent to me. Evidence was led that yes, they were, comp they were submitted to her, they were received in her office, and she blatantly refused to act to it. Why I think and submit that she does not understand the weight behind accountability, she does not understand the weight behind transparency, she does not understand the reason why there is a rule of law in this country. Count two on misconduct, yes, she acknowledged that she made those particular statements. She said yes, she made those statements about the 86 million, she acknowledged misleading the people, she acknowledged that there was no only one account and that whatever she was saying was falsehood. If a leader cannot be held account for the statement that they make, then where is this country going? We must tell the current generation and the future generation that it is important to speak the truth, that it is important to stick to the way of the truth. That is what is right, that is what is just. Did Governor Kawira maintain the path of truth? Did she stick to the path of, the path of truth? Did she do what is right in the circumstances? We submit that she, 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 she willingly veered away from the path of truth. The evidence of the window and may he rest in peace was never tested. None of them cross examined that lady. Her evidence went uncontroverted. Is it usual for a defense counsel not to test the veracity of the evidence of a witness who is putting up a case and a grievous, uh, a serious case such as this one? It is not usual. They only knew that they have nothing to cross-examine that lady on and that whatever she said is there for truth. And as such, we submit that Article 10, Article 10 again was proved on the, on the uh, on, uh, which speaks to values of um, and, and principles of governance. Among them, the value of good governance, the value of integrity, the value of accountability, the value of transparency. How can a person lead a county if she's, she, has, she's, she has a deficit of integrity? If she has a deficit of accountability? If she has a deficit of transparency? If she cannot respect the rule of law, how can she lead the county? The county performance is premised on the laws. It's premised on the rule of law. If she does not respect that rule of law, is she then worth her salt? Look at Article, Article 73 of the Constitution. It's paramount when seeking to establish whether or not this, provision, this um, allegation has been substantiated. It speaks about the authority assigned to a state officer. It speaks about public trust must be exercised in a manner that is consistent and demonstrate respect for the people. Does that video and the conduct that was exhibited before this assembly demonstrate respect for the people? Does it bring honor to the nation and the dignity to the office of the governor? Does it promote 
confidence, public confidence in the integrity of that office, we submit that the conduct exhibited by the, deputy, the, by the, by the governor through the evidence of the witness that was not controverted, flies over the face of Article 73, and that does not breathe confidence, it does not demonstrate respect for the people, it does not breathe, uh, in, uh, indicate integrity, it does not bring honor to that office. If she cannot honor that office, why should she hold it? If she cannot honor that office, why should he keep it? If she, has, she cannot honor that office, and she has no dignity for it, why should she keep it? Honorable Senators, I urge you to find it that that provision has been proved and has been substantiated. On the question of, uh, of paying Kiambi's um, Christus Manyara, it must be remembered that she has admitted on oath that this Kiambi Christus is a person who works in the, in the office of the county, of the county governor. She has admitted on oath that evidence has been led that he is one of those people who are accused for the murder of the, and the slain of a sniper. Put to task why she has continu he has continu he continued to earn his full salary while still in custody for six months. She simply said, it wasn't me. When will Governor Kawera uh, learn? To be responsible. When will she ever learn to own up for a mistake that is so glaring such as this one? She takes no cognizance that money was spent unlawfully. She takes no cognizance of the provisions of Article, one, Article 201 of the Constitution. Honorable Senators, Article 201 is paramount in the manner in which the resources of this nation are governed. Article 201 speaks about the principles of public finance and it provides that there must be prudent use of public finances. Was this one use, one way of prudent use of those resources? Why should a person who is in remand continue to earn a full salary? Why should actions not be taken for a person who perpetuates these violations? It speaks about openness and accountability, including financial integrity. Was that the best way of applying the meager resources? Honorable Senators, as I pen off, I urge you to fight it, that, that this act and conduct must be attributed to the governor. There is clear nexus that the governor knew that this person is in custody, having worked in his office, it then is responsible of the governor not to know that a person attached to, his, to her office is not in office for six months. How, res how responsible is that governor? If the governor cannot learn that a person is, who is attached to, his, to her office is not present, how can she be allowed to get away with this? This is a governor who is incapable of running the affairs of Meru County. We ask you, Honorable Senators, and we humbly submit that you pave way for her to have another person manage the affairs. This is not about being a woman. Accountability is not being a woman. There's nothing to do with being a woman when you are called